part of my motivation for starting this channel was to try and get my hands on some free stuff, like these guys. Games Workshop very kindly sent me. Sent to me early by Games Workshop. Want to say a massive thanks to Games Workshop for sending us these. They asked me if I wanted any. Um, yes please. Needless to say, I got no such thing. So, setting aside envy and fiscal responsibility, I went ahead and bought the Battle of Osgiliath box set, along with the Gondor Mansion and Tower Kit. It's not quite the mountain of plastic, it's more like a small hillock. I'm going to try and push my limited supply of plastic as far as I can to create an entire gaming board. I'm Adam Haig, and this is 3D Games. If I had extra sets to work with, I'd probably do what everyone else has done and build an Osgiliath board. Constraints can boost creativity, however, and as I clipped sprues, I considered different Middle-earth locations. As a boy reading The Lord of the Rings for the first time, I used to pore over Tolkien's map, imagining what kind of landscapes different areas would have. A location that has always appealed to me is Hirondor of South Gondor, and particularly near Harad and the Harad Road. I like the mystery of this area, as it's not covered in any real detail by the books or the films. This will give me a chance to let my imagination run wild while keeping grounded in Tolkien's Middle Earth. The board I am building is going to be a full 4x4 foot battlefield. I start by constructing a frame out of a 4x4 foot sheet of MDF and some 30mm timber which I cut at a 45 degree angle so they join at the corners. These were glued into place using liquid nails and then held in place by using clamps while the glue sets. I cut some 30mm thick polystyrene to size before gluing it to the MDF. This provides a solid foundation for the board that is strong and lightweight. I flip the whole board upside down to screw the timber frame in place. Using a countersink ensures that the screws sit flush and won't scratch your dining table. I add another layer of 30mm polystyrene to add some height to the board. Once the foundation is complete, it's time to shape the basic landform. I roughly sketch the shape of the hills on polystyrene before cutting out and tapering with a sharp hobby knife. I don't have a specific method with this and am simply guided by what I think would look cool for a battlefield. With terrain building I believe in the importance of storytelling. I like to imagine the history of the battlefield, the factions that fought there and what strategies they used. This can lead to fun custom scenarios and add narrative depth to your games. So my vision for this board is an old settlement of Numenor that acted as a trade hub facilitating the flow of goods along the Harad Road. They would have needed towers to keep a watch for Haradrim raiders and to protect the citizens. Fast forward to the Third Age and it has long been abandoned and has fallen into decay. Ok, back to building. The basic landforms are fixed in place with polyurethane glue and secured with toothpicks. These are weighed down until the glue sets. I then build up the cliff face by attaching plaster cast rocks. Liquid nails is great for this, but hot glue also works well enough. I keep adding these rocks to create interesting looking cliffs and outcrops. Using a hobby knife to cut the rocks makes it simple to form specific shapes. To create a neat and tidy finish, as well as increasing the overall strength of the board, I use MDF that is cut to shape. After tracing the shape of the landform, I cut it out with a jigsaw. I used liquid nails to stick it to the side before securing it in place with screws. Now it's time to smooth and blend the landforms with Sculptor Mold. This is mixed with water till it has the consistency of cottage cheese. I slather this all over the landforms, focusing on the joins to create a nice smooth slope, and to create undulations on areas that appear too flat. Sculptor Mold is also great for blending the different rocks together. Start by forming the basic shapes and then gradually add details and textures. Once painted, it becomes hard to tell what is plaster cast and what is Sculptor Mold. To make the pathway from the towers, I used some air drying clay into which I pressed a textured roller to create a cobblestone pattern before trimming away the excess with a metal ruler. This was carefully removed using a spatula to transfer to the board. I painted PVA glue over the area where I'll attach the path to strengthen its bond. Using a spatula to press the sides into the board makes sure that the path is firmly fixed in place. I decided to have a go at sculpting some stone steps running down from the other tower. 
I wanted to make sure that these steps would work with gameplay, so I made each step have a small overhang. This means that even if a miniature's base does not fit on a step, it will be held in place by the overhang. Using a Ruins of Middle Earth terrain piece as a guide, I carefully sculpted flagstones into each step. This was time consuming but really satisfying to do, and I really liked the look. To make the Harad Road, I first applied a layer of sculptor mould that I smoothed with a spatula. I then firmly pressed a cobblestone pattern into it using a textured roller. For all the areas on which I will build the ruins, I spread a thin layer of polyfiller and again used a textured roller. I find that spraying the roller lightly with soapy water reduces the filler sticking. I applied some more sculptor mould to blend the cobblestone paths into the hillside. This stuff can take a long time to properly dry, so I moved the board from a cold garage studio to my nice warm lounge to speed up the process. In my last video I showed how to create some awesome and effective looking rubble by making a silicone mould to cast and plaster before smashing it into chunks. I used a hobby knife to add weathering and it was rightly pointed out in the comments that doing this with my bare hands was really stupid. Introducing Occupational Health and Safety Glove. I do appreciate your comments, so if you have any tips and tricks or suggestions, or if you'd just like to say hi, then please drop a comment below. Okay, to create the collapsed tower, I used liquid nails to glue the base chunks onto the board. The empty space within the rubble was filled with expanding foam. I go ahead and keep adding bits to the ruin, mixing plastic and plaster parts and strengthening with expanding foam. I wanted this to look convincingly like a collapsed tower while still allowing troop movement up onto the hill for gameplay. For the semi-ruined tower, I combined half the plastic kit with partially destroyed bits of plaster. The plaster was secured in place with lots of super glue which was then activated with baking soda. This creates a strong bond but may need several layers to really fix each part in place. Next I painted all the ground areas of the board with yellow ochre mixed with a little white. This will make sure that if any of the ground cover comes away, it won't expose horrible white polystyrene. All of the rocks were painted with the leopard spot technique. This involves dabbing spots of watered down paints onto the rocks. For this I used ochre, brown and green. I then sprayed all the rocks with watered down Mod Podge to seal it before washing all of the rocks with black. The end result was, well, pretty crap actually. I messed up the process, so I'll have to fix that later. To add more texture to the rubble, I sprinkled some gravel and broken bits of plaster followed by sand and sealed in place with watered down PVA. The next step was to prime all of the ruins with brown. I used my airbrush for this because it's quick and efficient. Once I had decided on the configuration of my ruins, I secured each piece in place by applying hot glue and pressing them firmly into the board. I then went ahead and finished priming the ruins with the airbrush. This could be done with a brush, but you would need to thin the paint and brush it on in several coats to avoid obscuring the details. I also decided to try something different with the rocks, so primed them all with the same colour. This rubble was all made with plaster and blue stuff moulds. I go into how to make this in detail in my how to make realistic Gondor ruins video which is linked above. By incorporating these bits with parts from the plastic kits you can really maximise your terrain in a cost effective way. And the fact is you simply cannot make convincing rubble like this with the plastic kits alone. I wanted the ruins on the outskirts of the town to be almost completely eroded and reclaimed by the environment and so used bits of rubble to create the impression of what were once the foundations of buildings. Again gravel, broken bits of plaster and coarse sand were added to enhance the crumbled look of the ruins. All areas of rubble and cobblestones were then primed with the same brown as the ruins. I followed this with a spray of Vallejo Israeli sand. This is applied at an angle so that the brown still shows in the recesses and under archways to create the impression of shadows. It's a testament to the level of detail on these kits that painting them in this way looks so good. The Israeli sand is followed up by a lighter coat of desert tan. Again this is applied at an angle to simulate the way light would catch on raised surfaces. 
I painted the road with a patchy mix of all three colours to create some interesting tonal variety. With the rocks I decided to go for a striated look. This was achieved by carefully painting lines of different colours including terracotta, Israeli sand and burnt umber. This is part of what I love about the process of terrain building. There are no mistakes, only lessons, and sometimes they can lead you to trying a new technique and achieving even better results. I actually think this look suits the arid look of this board. The rocks were then dry brushed with a light grey colour to emphasise the texture and raised areas. I did the same with all of the ruins and rubble along with the road, pathways and stone steps. The light grey was followed by almost pure white which was dry brushed lightly in a downwards motion targeting raised and upper sections where light would catch. For all wooden sections I mixed some wildwood contrast paint thinned with contrast medium. This applied over the desert tan prime is a very quick and easy way to paint anything with a wood grain texture. I painted this onto all of the broken timber of the ruins along with the doors and the trapdoors. The tiles were painted with burnt sienna to create a terracotta look to match the warm browns of the board. This was dry brushed with raw sienna followed by a lighter dry brush of raw sienna mixed with white. I then used highly watered down black and brown paints to wash all of the ruins and rubble. I don't use any fancy specialised paint for this, any old acrylic paint will do. The trick is to thin it to a wash consistency making sure it's thoroughly mixed and it works great to create a grimy look that helps accentuate the details by darkening the recesses. This is followed by targeted washes of watered down sapia ink. I apply this in streaks focusing on areas where grime would build up over time. I love this part of the process because the ruins really start to come to life and look like they've been exposed to the elements for a life age of the earth. Next I wanted to add some spots of Ethonian camo shade. This is a lovely olive green wash that works great for creating the look of mildew. I apply this sparingly in areas where small amounts of moisture would gather like under the eaves of windows and in shaded corners. I finish off the doors and trap doors by applying lead voucher to any areas of metal. I'm really happy with how the ruins are looking. They look very old and weather beaten. Now it's time to apply the ground cover. For this I will use a mixture of tan coloured tile grout along with fine and coarse sand and some stones locally sourced. This is applied in sections by first painting the area with a generous coat of PVA glue. The rocks are then scattered at the base of the cliffs and sparingly at various points on the ground. I then sprinkle coarse sand around the rocks. A mixture of fine soil and tile grout is sprinkled all over the ground area. It is important to wear a mask when doing this because the dust is very bad for your lungs. Don't worry about trying to be tidy with the step because the random clumps and undulations that occur help to create a realistic looking ground cover. I used a couple of different coloured grouts for this to create some variation. Around the base of the ruins and rubble I mixed in more of a grey tone. This is blended in by sprinkling some of the main tan colour in amongst it and when activated later the colours will bleed into one another. Going back over the grout with sprinkles of grit and coarse sand adds to the textural variety breaking up the uniformity of the ground cover. I methodically work over the entire board gluing tile grout and gravel all over the ground areas. I pile the grout up against and over the rubble to enhance the ancient look of the ruins. I use an old paintbrush to sweep grout off areas where I want the details to show through. Sweeping the grout against walls like this helps create the look of how windswept desert sands would gather naturally. It also helps ensure that those lovely cobblestone patterns still show through. If you enjoy this content and would like to help support the channel there are several ways you can do this. Consider joining the 3D Games Patreon listed in the description. This will grant you access to exclusive content, works in progress and access to the Discord server. You also get this shout out. Thank you all so much. I truly appreciate the support and it really helps me to stay motivated to produce content. Please also consider purchasing your hobby supplies through my affiliate links listed in the description. Any sales made through these links sends a small commission my way. And of course don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell.
And speaking of hobby supplies, to add further textural variety to the ground cover I use Geek Gaming Desert Sand Base Ready. This is sprinkled in patches all over the board, focusing particularly on areas where I would imagine stones to be. Okay, now comes the time that both excites and terrifies me. Matt seal it. All the ground cover is sealed in place by first soaking each area with isopropyl alcohol followed by matte sealant. The ISO activates the tile grout and helps the sealant to flow through all layers of aggregates rather than just create a skin at the top. Well the matte sealant has dried but unfortunately it's left like a chalky white residue on a lot of the surfaces on the rocks and on some of the ruins that's because of the, probably the humidity and the cold it hasn't quite set properly but it's been four days since i sprayed it and it's still looking like this so you can see here this kind of chalky white look it shows up particularly bad on these little bits of tiles here chalky chalky annoying looking stuff as you can hear, it's pouring with rain, so the humidity is way up there and it's cold, so everything takes ages to set. <sighs> Trusting in the process, I continued by dusting the upper levels of the ruins with more tile grout. This was also sprinkled onto the stairs and the excess was brushed against the walls. After a brief period of crippling a decision, I decided I would add some flock. I used some Woodland Scenics Fine Turf Yellow Grass that I sprinkled in patches here and there, followed by very sparing amounts of Fine Turf Burnt Grass. I wanted this board to have the look of the outskirts of a desert, so although it's very arid, it still has some hardy plant life scratching out a harsh existence. This was all sealed before moving to the next step. The tile grout and flock is all sealed in place and I'm pretty chuffed with how it's all looking. It's got that beautiful dry, arid look, uh, which is what I was hoping for. So now the time has come to add a few little details in the form of tufts. I used a variety of tufts of different sizes and colours while still keeping to the arid look. I attached these in groups around the ruins and against the cliffs. As always, tufts tend to look best when applied like this rather than sporadically all over the place. The tufts that I used here are all self-adhesive, but I used scenic glue to ensure that they stay in place. To create a lovely clean finish to the board, I painted the sides with a glossy black. I added magnets to the buildings so that each level can be removed for ease of gameplay. Magnets have also been used for the tower so that it can be removed for storage and travel. And here is the finish board! an ancient and long abandoned outpost of Numenor guarding the Harad Road, gradually being reclaimed by the harsh landscape of the South Gondor frontier. Of course, I have to add some minis for some cinematic shots. The valiant warriors of Gondor, wearing very impractical armor for this arid landscape, hold the cruel Haradrim raiders at bay. Well the matte sealant did eventually set and so no more chalky residue. I'm absolutely stoked with how this table's turned out and can't wait to play some games on it. Please let me know if you'd like to see some battle reports filmed on this table and check out my Facebook group and Instagram pages linked in the description. And once again, please like and subscribe and I'll see you here next time on 3D Games Wargaming and Terrain. Thanks so much for watching and good hobbying everyone.